Welcome to Investment Insights from Perch Wealth, your ultimate guide to smart real estate investment and achieving your financial goals. Your host, Ehud Gersten, is a renowned expert and the founder of Perch Wealth. His team specializes in 1031 exchanges and breaks down complex concepts into digestible strategies for financial independence. Dive deep into the world of investment, from the intricacies of 1031 exchanges to expert insights on real estate investments. Hi, I'm Ehud Gersten. Let's get into it. Commercial real estate is a highly tax-advantaged industry, and this is true whether someone invests in real estate directly or passively through a syndication, fund, or Delaware Statutory Trust, DST. In all cases, investors can write off significant expenses like depreciation that can potentially offset the taxes they would otherwise pay on income earned from those assets. In this podcast, we discuss what DST investors need to know ahead of filing their tax returns each year. So what is a Delaware Statutory Trust? A Delaware Statutory Trust, or DST, is an investment vehicle in which the trust holds title to one or more income-generating properties. The trust is overseen by a sponsor who manages the real estate on the investor's behalf. Investors own a pro rata share of the assets held by the DST. In other words, a DST is a way for investors to fractionally invest in commercial property. There are many potential benefits associated with investing in a DST. Many people will sell individually owned property and then roll the proceeds of that sale into a DST using a 1031 exchange, a process that allows them to defer paying capital gains tax. DSTs also allow investors to move from actively managing their real estate investments to being completely passive, since DST investments are managed by the DST sponsor, a third party that is generally highly experienced and adept at overseeing and acquiring significant real estate deals. Let's discuss how is DST income reported. The IRS classifies ownership in a DST as direct ownership of real estate for tax purposes. Therefore, rather than receiving a K-1 or traditional 1099, DST shareholders will receive a substitute 1099 form from the DST sponsor. This substitute 1099 includes some version of the DST's operating statement that outlines the investor's pro rata share of income and expenses associated with the DST's assets. The DST sponsor will generally send one substitute 1099 statement for each property owned by the DST that outlines the income and expenses for that specific asset. If there is any income earned from the DST, the investor must report their pro rata share of that income on their IRS Schedule E when they go to file their taxes, just like they would for real estate owned individually or directly. This income will be treated and taxed as ordinary income. Because DST investors indirectly own a fractional share of the real estate held by the DST, these investors can write off their pro rata share of expenses and depreciation. Key deductions that can help offset the tax burden associated with the income they've earned on their DST investments that year. Investors can therefore seek to maximize their returns by reducing the amount of money they owe to the IRS. Depending on the value of the deductions, there may be excess savings that can be applied to the investor's other sources of income as well. Please note, passive losses can only be used to offset passive income, not active income such as that earned through a W-2. Investors can also claim their pro rata share of the depreciation associated with the DST assets, which can potentially be significant if the DST sponsor does a cost segregation study and accelerates depreciation in the first few years of the hold period. We recommend speaking with your tax professional, like a CPA or tax lawyer, to walk through all year-end statements to determine which deductions might be applicable. Investors must file a tax return in every state in which they have real estate holdings. The same is true for DST investments. If the DST property is different from the state in which the investor lives, they must report the income as required by that state. Some states like Texas, Florida, Nevada, and Washington have no state income tax. Other states have what's known as de minimis filing standards, which means that income tax only needs to be reported if it exceeds a certain threshold. If the DST has real estate assets in multiple states, investors must file tax returns in each of those respective states as well. Let's discuss the top mistakes people make when reporting DST income. 
Despite an investor's best intentions, it is easy to make mistakes when reporting their DST income. This is because the reporting documents that a DST sponsor issues can vary. Some will issue reports that are 500 plus pages long. Others will provide simple one, two page forms that include the bare minimum in terms of information. Finding the information needed to accurately report DST income is essential and often requires the support of a tax professional experienced with DSTs. Here are some of the most common mistakes people sometimes make when reporting DST income on their tax returns. One, amortizing repairs instead of taking the deduction in the current year. Repairs, unlike major capital improvements, can be deducted in the year in which the repair occurred. Most DST sponsors will report expenses as property improvements. It is up to the DST investor, that is their tax preparer, to classify those improvements as either repairs or capital expenses. The investor should also be looking for whether those costs were paid by the DST operating account or out of the reserves, which impacts if and to what extent they can be depreciated. 2. Not amortizing loan fees. The loan fees should be outlined in the Private Placement Memorandum, or PPM, and can be deducted to offset an investor's earned income. This is why it is essential that you provide your tax advisor with a copy of the PPM if you have not done so already. 3. Not taking all applicable deductions. Many DST investors will hire a tax preparer to assist with their income tax reporting, but unless those tax advisors specialize in real estate, including DSTs, they might only read the first page of the substitute 1099 that summarizes income and expenses. They might overlook potential deductions associated with repairs, tenant improvements, lease commissions, and the like. 4. Ignoring the tax treatment of DST reserves. DSTs will generally have an escrow account holding some amount of reserves to be used for unforeseen expenses. This is a way to ensure DSTs remain solvent since they cannot make capital calls from their investors. However, reserves are not considered part of the property cost and should therefore not be used by investors when calculating the cost of replacement property when doing a 1031 exchange. Instead, investors who have done a 1031 exchange into a DST should reduce the purchase price of their interest in the DST by the amount of the reserves. 5. Not filing a tax return in each state in which the DST holds assets. As a reminder, if a DST owns property in multiple states, a tax return must be filed in each state that requires investors to pay income tax. Not filing those returns could subject you to interest and penalties. Once a DST sponsor files their taxes in that state, it begins the clock on the statute of limitations for which states can go back and audit or request further payment from investors. 6. Not claiming credit for taxes paid to other states. For those who report DST income in multiple states, they may be eligible for a credit and a refund of that tax on the tax return for the state in which they personally reside. For example, if you live in California but have invested in a DST that owns property in North Carolina, you will file a tax return in North Carolina, but then should get a tax credit on your income tax return in California. So when must DST investors file their taxes? When a DST investor files their taxes depends on what sort of entity they've used to invest in the DST. Those who have invested in a DST individually or via a pass-through entity like an estate, trust, or a C-corp have until April 15th to file their taxes each year. Most people who invest in a DST use one of these investment vehicles. However, on occasion, someone may invest in a DST through an S-Corp or partnership, in which case they are required to file their taxes earlier by March 15th each year. Of course, this assumes normal tax deadlines. Tax filing deadlines are sometimes extended due to extraordinary circumstances like the COVID pandemic in 2020. Individuals may also seek an extension if they need more time to file. In any event, it is important to monitor these deadlines closely to remain in compliance with IRS obligations. Investors should speak with their tax professionals for guidance. We always recommend hiring a tax professional like a tax attorney or CPA to assist with your tax preparation and filing. When interviewing potential tax advisors, be sure to inquire about the professional's experience with DST specifically. Working with someone who understands the mechanics of DST income and expense reporting will help to ensure you are maximizing the value of potential deductions while remaining compliant with all IRS guidelines. Protect yourself by working with a pro. For more help achieving your financial goals, don't hesitate to reach out to us at perchwealth.com. The following are the real estate and 1031 risk disclosures. 
there's no guarantee any strategy will be successful or achieve investment objectives. All real estate investments have the potential to lose value during the life of the investments. The income stream and depreciation schedule for any investment property may affect the property owner's income bracket and or tax status. An unfavorable tax ruling may cancel deferral of capital gains and result in immediate tax liabilities. All financed real estate investments have potential for foreclosure. These 1031 exchanges are offered through private placement offerings and are illiquid securities. There is no secondary market for these investments. If a property unexpectedly loses tenants or sustains substantial damage, there is potential for suspension of cash flow distributions. Costs associated with the transaction may impact investors' returns and may outweigh the tax benefits. Tax benefits are not guaranteed and are subject to changes in the tax code.